and welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Laura McIntyre, and with me is Jackie Poplar, who is the current second Ward City Councilwoman, um, who is currently running for second Ward City Councilwoman again in the upcoming recall election this November. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jackie, and and welcome to Meet the, Meet the Candidates. My pleasure. Thank you. So let's let's just jump right into it. Let's why don't you tell us all about yourself and and you know how long you've been in Flint and what your role in Flint is and ah, as if you anyone doesn't know. How long know, I've been in Flint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've been in Flint the majority of my life. I'm a product of Flint. Went to Flint Public Schools, which at that time was the number one in the country, Flint Public Schools. And I would say the world because we had world leaders that came from other countries to see what we were doing here in the city of Flint. Um, went to Fairview, which is was grew up in the St. John area, I'm very proud. Uh, we were a community, a family there, something that we're kind of missing now, but we truly need to get back to, and hopefully we will. Um, went to, um, graduated from Northern, but I went to Northern and Central. Um, went to my community college momentarily, and then, uh, I left there and I went to Ray Vogue uh, Fashion Merchandising School, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and uh, I got an associate degree from there for fashion merchandising. And a lot of people remember me from the J.L. Hudson Company because I was very fortunate to be one of the assistant managers to open that store. And worked in retailing most of my life, um, got into politics with Sarvis Park, mm -hmm. which is across the street from me. And the way I got into that is I had to go over there one day and literally run the drug dealers and the prostitutes out of the park because the kids couldn't play there anymore. And they were very upset. And I have a corner house, so all the kids knocked on my door. And so one day my girlfriend said, why don't you run for city council? And that's what got me on this journey. And I'm very proud of some of the accomplishments uh, that I've had along the way. Uh, a lot of the constituents that I have met along the way and things that I were able to do that were in my power along the way. And um, it's been a pleasure. I love serving my city and I wish to continue serving my city uh, making um, the administration accountable, making sure that our government is accountable for everything, making sure that we continue to make the city safer, make sure that we can bring economic development here, and just make sure that we have a community again where families can continue to thrive children can grow and want to stay in their hometown. And so this is the things that we have to get back to. And as I talk to my constituents, I always tell them that uh, never give up hope. We work together and we can get things done. This is not a one woman show. This is not a one man show. This has got to be done as a community, as a group, with caring people. Well, thank you. You you answered a whole bunch of questions that I that I had on my well, list I'm sure here, you had more. <laughs> and I do I do have more. Um, and one of the things that I think that we just need to cut to the chase and just we need to start. We need to talk about the water. We need to talk about about the the water issue. I mean, you've talked about uh, um, uh, about coming together as 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 a community, as a family, but we're we're going on year four of the water crisis. People are still using bottled water and filters. And as I'm sure you're very well aware, tomorrow very is, well aware. <laughs> is a contentious meeting that is that is coming up in terms of making a decision or not making a decision or making the decision to not make a decision about the going to the Karagandi Water Authority or the Great Lakes Water Authority. Where do you stand on that? I stand right now on the Karagandi Water Authority. I do not believe, I will not believe, I will not put on the backs of my grandchildren, my grandchildren's grandchildren, 
and none of the generations of anybody's children a 30-year contract that I know, that I truly know, will raise the water rates in the city of Flint. There are too many hidden agendas and anything that Governor Snyder is pushing, it can't be very well because this is the reason why we're in the mess that we're in right now, because of him. There is a lot of hidden things going on and I feel truly in my heart that all of this will soon come to the light. And so I'm standing my ground. I will not be a part of a 30 year contract that I know is not good for the people of the city of Flint. First of all, we need to ask Detroit, what are you gonna do about your 100 year old pipes that are eventually, they have gotta be fixed. Who's going to pay for the fixing? How long will you continue to use Flint, Michigan as your payee? How long? How long will the people, the citizens of Flint, be held hostage by Detroit, by the state of Michigan, and others that throw a rock and don't want to show their hands? This is so ugly. And I will not be a part of it. I will not. I don't care what the federal judge says. And he, this judge acts like we are the ones, counsel that's holding this. We are not holding this up. We are not holding this up. Well, and just to remind viewers, the, the judge, uh, you've been ordered, city council has been ordered to make a decision about the... The, uh, going to Karagandi Water Authority or Gliwa by tomorrow. Um, so this is the judgment that you're that you're talking about, where you actually have an unprecedented move, where a judge has ruled that city council needs to come to a decision by a certain date. So and and we have looked at some <clears throat> things over the weekend. We've come up with some things that we can maybe, you know, put in a contract that will be hopefully good for everyone, the administration, and for the council, and most of all, for the people. It's about the people. They can't pay the water bills as it is. This is ridiculous. And when I say the people, I'm talking about myself. My husband is a retiree of General Motors, and we're in the same boat as some of the other retirees. Thank God my home is paid for. But this is utterly ridiculous. So hopefully the judge, but what I've heard, this particular judge is a drama judge. And he likes to hoard people off to a sale until they make a decision that he wants. Well, I feel that he's a federal judge and that's against the federal law. So it sounds like we have a lot to anticipate for tomorrow's meeting, well, that's for sure. Well, me, myself, I believe in the power of prayer. And that's what I'm doing. I'm this journey, I have had to rely on prayer for the last 12 years. And we're still dealing with one of the highest water rates in the country. In the country. We're still dealing with water that is undrinkable without a filter. People are still using bottled water. Um, and then we have the issue of, of being ordered by, by judges to, to make decisions. And we're, we're coming to the end of our first, the, the first part of our interview now. We've got a couple more minutes and, and we'll go into part two. But uh, I would like to circle back around in terms of talking about the financial emergency manager because that definitely is related to some of our water issues, the water bills, and maybe we can get you to speak about uh, Public Act 436 and where you stand on it well, as well. Well, what I stand, I've never believed in emergency managers. First of all, the city never would have been an emergency when you take revenue sharing from a city. How do you expect them to make that money up? 
if property taxes are going down, you take $10 million in revenue sharing. You have half of a city that's not working. How do you make up money? How do you do it? It's totally impossible. But then again, the governor, if people can remember, he bragged on having a surplus for the state. Well, the surplus for the state was made off of the backs of Flint, Michigan, Highland Park, the poor cities in the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. and basically the black cities. Absolutely. That's how, this is a heartless man who sent a heartless, well, all of the emergency managers were heartless, but. Oh, and some are indicted for uh, homicide, for involuntary manslaughter. Well, it's one that haven't been indicted yet, and he needs to be, truthfully. So people need to do your homework. Do your homework. And I want to say before we're done. Got about one minute, and then. then I got, got one the, minute. The second. The when second you go months. to, before you go to the polls, do your homework. Watch what hidden agendas are. Look at experience. In this time that we're in right now, we need some experience. And we need someone that knows what they're doing to bring this city back, and we need a fighter. And for the second ward, I've always been the fighter. I always will be the fighter. Thanks for the constituents that have stuck with me because they know what I do. God bless you all. And I love my second ward and the city of Flint. Well, we're not done yet, Jackie. We've You're got, not? No, we've got we've got part two of Meet the Candidates uh, back. Part two? Yes, part two <laughs> after after the break. So thank you. Oh, we got a break. We've got, we get a little break and then we're back for part oh, two. Oh, we're back. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. to meet the candidates. I'm in part two of our interview with, I'm Laura McIntyre, your host, part two of our interview with Jackie Poplar, who is the second ward councilwoman currently and is currently running for the second ward uh, seat again in the upcoming November recall election. Welcome back, Jackie. Thank you. We were just getting into some fiery discussion about yes, we about the role of the the current Governor Snyder and his um, I'm supposed to be neutral, but his appalling revenue sharing tactics and how they affected our city. And uh, we started to touch on Public Act 436 and financial emergency management. Um, we've got a lot of things to talk about in 13 minutes, so go. <laughs> um, one of the worst. One of the most appalling emergency managers was Jerry Ambrose. Uh, Jerry, I believe, is the actual one that signed um, the contracts that got us in the mess. And he was heartless. You couldn't talk to him. You couldn't reason with him. And at a council meeting, you know, I'm I'm a Christian lady, okay? I lean on the Lord. But sometimes you fall off that wagon. And I'm not ashamed to say that we all fall down, but we get up. I was so appalled at Jerry Ambrose um, that I brought him a bag of dog food to a council meeting. I remember hearing about that. Yes. 
And I told him the reason why I was giving him the dog food. One of my constituents, um, 85 years old, I won't call her name. She had to leave her home. She couldn't afford consumer water and her medicine. Her house had been paid for for 50 years. So she moved to senior living. She has a, I have visited her. Very nice senior living. And she called me over and she says, Miss Poplar, I only have one thing left and that's my dog. And she said, I can't take him. So I have to give him to my niece. But I do have a bag of dog food left. And I said, you give me that dog food. I said, because I have a dog downtown that I'm going to make sure gets this dog food. And that's the reason why I gave Jerry Ambrose that dog food. Mm -hmm. Because it broke my heart. 85 years old. And you got to leave your home. Mm -hmm. Because you can't afford the water. You can't afford consumer. And you're breaking pills in half. See, that's one thing, people. I don't brag about things that I do. But I'm going to let you know. It's a many a day that I have had to feed somebody. I have had to buy diapers. Mm -hmm. I don't have money, but God provided. See, mm -hmm. when people step into this political arena, if you truly step in it with a heart for the people, It'll break your heart. This has been a rough, rough it's been election. Rough. Yeah, it's been, there's been a lot of divisiveness. Um, a but lot I of stand, accusations. I thank God that I'm able to say that for the last 12 years, the second ward has had a Christmas party that I provided for the least of these. I'm the only council person, the only, that made sure that those that could not enjoy a Christmas party, because the majority of people, I'm invited to tons of parties. I don't go to them, but I wanted to make sure that my constituents were able, and I've done that. I'm very proud to say um, and they've gotten important. coats, they've gotten turkeys, they got more, the kids got more candy, never ran out of food, nothing. And I ask for nothing in return, except I want to see a smile on your face. I want you to enjoy Christmas and realize what Christmas is giving. And since I've started this, I've had so many volunteers step up to the plate and say, what can I do? What can I give? What can I bring? So I'm very proud of that because that was something that was in my power. See, people don't understand a lot of what we do and responsible for a lot of stuff is not in our power that we really want to do. We used to have ward accounts. Mm -hmm. The emergency manager took that away. Where if I had a group in the second ward that wanted to paint a building, then I could use my money from my ward account, buy the paint, and they could paint the building. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that anymore. So it's hard. It has been so hard since the emergency managers came in, took over, and, you know, 
we have to go before the R tab. Mm -hmm. We meet, we okay something. We got to wait another week or two for Snyder's group to meet and do the final okay. Well, we're adults. We don't need babysitters. And that needs to be gone. I don't think a lot of people realize that we don't have our full autonomy back. Well, a lot of people don't realize because they don't come to the council meetings to learn. You have to come to learn how your city operates. And any one of my constituents can call me at 397-3205. And if I don't have the answer, I will get you the answer. When I ran in 2005, I made a commitment to my community that I would return every phone call. The reason why I haven't returned a phone call to you if you call me is because you talked too long and didn't leave your phone number, your phone was disconnected, or you just forgot. And I went as far as to send a letter to the person's home to let them know I tried to call you, but there was no number there. So I really haven't gotten that many complaints of Miss Poplar not calling them back. I've been accessible 24-7. I had surgery, hip surgery and knee surgery, recuperating in the nursing home, and they could not believe that I was on the phone taking care of city business. I love what I do. I love my people, and I'm dedicated to them. This is, is wonderful to hear your personal uh, testimony and experiences. Um, we've talked to several other of the candidates and what strikes me is the personal devotion and dedication on, on the local level. And you're talking about, you know, very uh, personal, um, direct this is things personal that you can to do. me. It is. I tell everybody in my ward, and some of them are laugh. They say, "Jackie, you you said that I'm your sister." I say, "Yes, you are. You're my sister. You're my brothers. I have seniors that I call my mom and my dad because my mother and father have gone on to glory, and they treat me just like I'm their child. I have a hundred year old lady around the corner from me. I sit, help her celebrate her birthday." because she's always believed in me. So, you know, I'm not in this. I know that everyone is not going to like Jackie Poplar. That's fine. You don't have to like me. But just let me help you. Whatever I can do for you, that's what I do. I want the second ward to be happy. I want the second ward to prosper. And I want, I do everything in my power. I'm accessible. Everybody knows where I live. We finally got, my, I prayed and prayed. We finally got service Park done for the children. Thank God for Keep Genesee County Beautiful. Thank God for the young men that adopted that park. Those were the same young men that used to do the drugs in the park. Now they have grown up and they have children. They adopted the park. They helped write the grant. And here we are. It's just a win-win situation. And we got to stop being afraid of our young people. We got to stop being afraid. If you don't know right and never been taught, teach somebody. Be kind to somebody. You don't know what that child's going through. I have children call me all the time. I said, thank you, Miss Poplar, for the kind word. My mother haven't given me a hug, mm -hmm. and you didn't even know me, and you hugged me at the grocery store. We're coming to the end of our second session for Meet the Candidates, and we're about to, to wind up. Is there any last words that you'd like to say? Um, we're talking to Jackie Poplar running for the second ward city council. Well, I will continue to demand accountability in government. I will always work to my ability for my ward and for the city of Flint. 
I will always serve with dignity as I always have. I will always treat my fellow colleagues with the respect that I have always given them. And for each and every citizen in the city of Flint, I will continue to love you, whether you believe in me or not. That's fine, because guess what? This is America, and we're the freest country I know, and I'll never take that away from anyone. Thank you very much, Jackie. I know that it's uh, you know, a, the end of a long day. We really appreciate you coming in here and talking my pleasure. with us. But I just want to touch base with my community to let them know who I really am. And I think you've done And a it's their great choice job. to make that decision. So thank you. And remember, signs don't vote. And people been stealing mine, okay? <laughs> thank you. you. Had to get that in there. Yes, Jackie Poplar, I <laughs> with the candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Listening to WFOV 92.1 LPF in Flint may cause one to think, may cause sleeplessness, agitation, motivation, and a strong desire to get involved. In rare cases, some may experience euphoria, a sense of community, and a relief of futility. Some listeners have reported in-depth, informed conversations, a better understanding of diversity, and a strong desire to get along. Be warned that programming on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint is not for the feeble-minded or those prone to intolerance, prejudice, and or bigotry. Before ingesting WFOV 92.1 LPFM content, listeners are advised to seek the advice of community advocates, activists, and supporters. That said, please enjoy. Be heard. Our Voices Radio. WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, baby. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. They say you don't have to be so strong. But this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then. So I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Look who's here. Whoa. Heard about the scarecrow who won an award? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota Va a terminar. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres.